Shalom ya shala shalom. Kala layam. Allah hayanawa. Yahweh ba Hashem ya washai. Ba Hashem ra kodash. The belongers to the apostles and elders, the great Muslim who teach and rule, who taught me this truth. Peace and salutation to the Akim, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect pushing this truth, and risk their own lives for the four corners of the earth. To the Akwath, listening and listening and learning, Shalom. And on the title of this lesson, the clergy warns final catastrophe could extinguish human race. Right? And uh, this is an article that came out on Zero Hedge today, March 18th. 2022, the year of Yahweh Bashim Yashai turning it up. And uh, we'll read this article and the Lord willing will attach some scripture. And it says here Pope Francis warns that the escalation of the conflict in Ukraine could lead to a final catastrophe that would extinguish the human race. Speaking during his weekly address, the Pope said humanity would have to start from scratch in the event of a thermonuclear war, right? So when I read that, uh, that, sa that statement made by the, 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 the leader of the clergy, this precept came into my mind. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 28, and it reads, But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, and this is the angel responding to Edris, Edris was asking him, right? So the angels are responding, this is his answer concerning the things that Ezra had asked him. I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. So yeah, we're in the time where evil is being sown. Wickedness is manifesting, continually growing. Exceedingly great on the earth. We're in that time where it's nothing but wickedness, right? But the destruction thereof is not yet come, right? But the destruction hasn't happened yet. Right? And what is this destruction going to entail? Before we go to that, let's get a... Uh, before we finish this precept, scripture just came to mind. Second Peter 3, verse 10, and it reads, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Right? So the, the day of the Lord is going to catch many people off guard. You know? You don't know when a thief's coming to break into your house. You know? <laughs> if your alarm system is disabled or not working or whatever, you can't anticipate when a thief's coming. A thief comes unannounced. Right? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, right? And this is not talking about, this word heavens here is not talking about the sky. This, this word heavens here is talking about the rulership, right? The rulership that is in place, right? And we're under Esau's rulership. We're under the rulership of these banking families, the wicked, right? It says the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And what's that great noise? What's going to cause a great noise? The missiles, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What's going to cause the elements to, to, to melt with fervent heat? The heat of the missiles. The earth also. And the works that are therein. Right? The earth. The works that are therein. All, all the wickedness that's going on here. All the infrastructure that's been built. That's been built. Right? Shall be burned up. It's all going to burn, man. This is according to scripture. The scriptures say this, man. You know, scriptures say the Lord is not a man that you should lie. Right? So the Lord's not lying. Everything is written here. Let's get that. Uh, Numbers 20, Numbers 23, I believe. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. The Most High is not a man that you should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Here's the point. Hath he said and shall he not do it? So everything that Lord's, the Lord, everything that's been prophesied in the scriptures is going to happen, right? Hath he not said and he shall and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Right, so it's all going to come to pass. Right, but back to the opening scripture. Second Ezra 4 verse 29. Here's the point. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, right? So what's being sown what's being sown right now in this time? Wickedness. So if it's not turned upside down, right? And if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, so if this wicked kingdom passes not away, right? It has to pass away. Why? Then cannot it come that is sown with good. Then the good can't come. Right? You you look at uh chapter Acts chapter 
1 verse 6 the, the the disciples knew this right because when 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 the lord when our lord resurrected from being crucified here's what the apostles asked him and here was the answer of our lord acts chapter 1 verse 6 and it reads when they therefore were come together right who the disciples right this is when our lord right arose from the dead they asked of him saying lord this is their question towards the lord, to our lord whose name is Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Yahweh Shai means he delivers, he saves in the Pale of Hebrew. Hamashiach means anointed, the anointed one, right? And his father's name is Yahweh, meaning he exists in the Pale of Hebrew, right? They asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the disciples, the apostles, our forefathers, they knew, this, they, they knew the prophecies. That, that the anointed one, Yahweh Shai, was going to restore the kingdom of Israel on earth as it is in heaven. Right? And he said unto them, and this was Yahweh Shai's answer, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Right? And that's that's... That's the word going out in the highways and the hedges. Who are the witnesses to Yahweh Shai? Bashim? Who are the witnesses to Yahweh Shai Hamashiach? His servants, the prophets, right? And in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And right, right, right now we are in the uttermost part of the earth. The uttermost part of the earth is America. Verse nine. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And what is this cloud? The cloud is what the world ignorantly calls UFOs. The clouds are the chariots. Right? Psalms 104. Let's prove that. Psalms 104 verse 3. And it reads. Verse 2. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Who, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Like a curtain. The Most High. Yahweh Bashim Shai. Who layeth the beams of the chambers in the waters? Here's the point. Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Right. So the clouds are the chariots. What the world ignorantly calls UFOs. Back in the Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. So Yahweh Shai was taken up by the chariots of Israel. Right? Matter of fact, let's get another precept. It's in uh Second Kings Second Kings two Script scripture says prove all things. Second Kings two verse eleven and it reads and this is this is when Elijah was taken up. And how was he taken up? We're gonna read it. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Right. So these chariots is what took Elijah up into heaven. Right. Back in Acts 1 verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, as Yahweh Shai went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These two men in white apparel were angels. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the same way he left is the same way he's coming back. Right? Isaiah 66, right? The same way Yahweh Shai left for the same way he's coming back. But this time he's coming with power and great glory, with the hosts of heaven, hosts being armies, right? Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord, Yahweh, will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Didn't we just read in 2 Kings 2.11? Let's go back there again. 
Then we just read in 2 Kings 2 11. Right. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Right. So now we go back to Isaiah 66. Verse 15 once again. For behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead, plead means a uh, uh, judge, with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right, so we know, according to scripture, this place is going to be purged with fire. Right? And it's the Lord's will. Isaiah 54 verse 16 and it reads behold I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire who's the smith in the ancient world a smith was someone who, who who made weapons and how did he make those weapons he made it with fire and with an anvil and a hammer and he fashioned his, his weapons swords axes whatever it may be that's what a smith was in the in the ancient world right but in to, in, 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 to, in today's terms right it says here behold I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire the smith is these nuclear scientists that create these weapons and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and that bringeth forth an instrument. What is the instrument? These missiles. And I have created the waster to destroy. And what is the waster? These missiles. So the Lord has put this, the, 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 the understanding within these nuclear physicists and engineers to create these 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 nuclear nuclear uh, nuclear bombs nuclear missiles right Malachi 1 Malachi 4 and 1 Malachi 4 and 1 and it reads for behold meaning look the day cometh that shall burn as an oven right and what's going to cause the, 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 the day to burn like an oven? <laughs> we just read it. Right? And all the proud. And who's the proud? Who's more prideful than America the Great? Yeah, and all that do wickedly, right? Wicked two-thirds. And these other nations that do wickedness. Shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Saith the Lord of hosts. Host being armies. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch, right? So everything, everything is going to be burnt up, man. Let's read this, uh, continue with this scripture, with this, uh, what the Pope, what the Pope said in this news article. Speaking during his weekly address, the Pope said humanity would have to start from scratch in the event of a thermal nuclear war, right? So we're going to close out here with Isaiah 24. Right. The only thing is the the, the, the everything is going to be starting from scratch, but it's going to be started from starting from scratch in righteousness, man. The kingdom to come after is going to be a kingdom of righteousness, right? Second as Second Ezra six verse nine said, uh, Esau is the end of the world, but Jacob is the the beginning of it that followeth after, right? What does that mean? We're 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 in the end, we're in, we're in the last stages, the, the end of the rulership of the wicked, right? Let's get it. Since I quoted it. Second Ezra 6 verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, right? This world, this world, this word world here is ah uh, eon. In, in in the in the Greek it's eon, which means period of time. Okay, it's not this doesn't mean the world. It means a period of time, an age, an era, right? An era, right? For Esau is the end of the world, right? The end of this period of time. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, right? So the next kingdom is a kingdom that will, that will be established on earth as it is as it is in heaven, right? By the hands, who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna establish it? Yah Yahweh Shai. Let's get another uh, let's get another precept. Uh, Revelation. Revelation. 
right? So our Lord is going to, um, it says, strike two kings. And in, on his head were many crowns. Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 19. Verse 11, and I saw heaven opened, right? So the sky is going to crack open and behold a white horse. This is, this, this is not a, 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 this is not a literal white horse. This is the, 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 the chariot, right? Which is what the world ignorantly calls UFOs. And he that sat upon, upon him was called faithful and true. Right, so this is going to be the father. The, this is going to be the chariot that Yahweh Shai makes his entrance in on. Right, he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's Yahweh Shai, and in righteousness he doth the judge and make war. So he's coming to judge and make war. Here's the point: his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Right, so he's not literally going to have crowns on his head. The the, the on his head many crowns is symbolic of him taking down all the rulerships. Every rulership, the ruling structure, right? He's going to take it all down. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself, that name, it, 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 it goes into his rank. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahweh, right? And if you read John chapter, if you read John chapter 1, it tells you who the Word is. Let's get it. Scriptures that prove all things. John chapter 1. Right? Yahweh is the word. John chapter 1 verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the word. Who's the word? Yahweh And the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. Right? So the word is Yahweh We know this. Back to Revelation chapter 19 verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. All right, these armies are the, are, are the angels, right? And the armies which were in heaven, the angels, followed him upon white horses, chariots, what the world enemy calls UFOs, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, right? He doesn't have a sword in his mouth, okay? This is parabolical, dark sayings, right? Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. As a matter of fact, Let's finish the scripture and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna grab another one. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, right? So if we re, if we go to Habakkuk chapter three, right? I'm gonna show you something here. Habakkuk chapter three. All right. So it says here in Revelation 19, verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Okay. All right, Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. And his brightness, and this is the vision of Habakkuk seeing the hosts of heaven, the armies of heaven, right? And his brightness was as, a, was as a light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was a hiding of his power. So let's look at this horns coming out of his hand. It's not horns, it's not literal horns. In the, it's in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, horns coming out of his hands. Right. Strong's, Strong's 87161. Strong's 87161. Karen. Karen. Let's hear that again. Strong, Strong's 8... H7161. Strong's H7161. Karen. Karen. Karen, right? Rays of light. Okay? Rays of light. So what it what what what's that scripture we just read? Habakkuk 3 verse 4. And his brightness is as, as of the light. He had horns, rays of light. Coming out of his hand, 
and there was a hiding of his power. Right. So what what are rays of light? Laser beams. Back in Revelation 19, verse 10. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, right? Those rays of light, those laser beams, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power, right? So he's doing the will of his father, right? To judge and make war. Right? So let's close out. Where was I? Isaiah 24 verse 1 and it reads, Behold the Lord, all caps, Yahweh, maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Right? This, this, is, what the, this is what the will of the Lord is. Right? He's going to take out one old kingdom to bring in a new. And how is he going to do it? Turning this place upside down. Right? We just read in Isaiah 66 verse 15, he's coming with fire, flames of fire. Right? This is how the Lord is going to do it. Verse 2, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priests. Right? So, common folk, they're going to get it. Elites, high title people, they're going to get it. As with the servant, so with his master. The servant going to get it, his master going to get it. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller, right? The buyer is going to get it. The seller is going to get it. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord, all caps, all, cap, all capital letters here. For the Lord, Yahweh, hath spoken his word. So, yeah, this statement here. The statement here by the by the by the clergy by the pope is correct. Final final catastrophe could extinguish the human race, but what's going to happen is it, it it's a re, it's a it's going to be a reset, but it's going to be a reset of doing away with the old and bringing in the new, right? There's not <laughs> that, that, that that's what the re, we just read it. That's what the reset will be, right? Right. But uh, yeah, sit on that. I uh, pray you edify it out of one out of one watches. I stay prayed up, prayed out ceasing. Kwamiashrala wa abad baba.